Hello, everybody, and guess what time it is? It is... It's Christmas! There we go. <laughs> there we go. I've got to shut this down now because it's going to start playing something else. So there we are. It's uh, the legendary... Oops, I put that on the other side. The Sonic Talk Christmas Special, and this is the Christmas Special hat that I think has now... This must be its seventh or eighth... I, I finally found it. Unfortunately, nothing terrible has happened to it. I remember buying buying this when we had our old premises and we were in the centre of town and there was a joke shop round the corner and I bought it in a joke shop for 50p or a pound shop <laughs> and it's it's stayed with me ever since and I've I've changed the lights as well look to kind of make it a bit more Christmassy so uh, welcome this is the Sonic Talk Christmas special I use the term special in more of a kind of well, not in a non-special way, because I haven't got anything special planned. It's just the last show before Christmas, and uh, this podcast happens to be uh, to do all to do with music technology and all those sort of things. So uh, it's probably a little bit of a misleading title, but I'm going to use it anyway in the title uh, and uh, as clickbait, because I'll be on holiday for a week. Well, uh, not on holiday, but we have a week off next week. Next show is going to be the 2nd of January. Uh, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Isotope. They'll be uh, sending a competition our way where we can win a copy of RX-7, which is their fantastic audio restoration bundle. So uh, let's get on to our guests. Uh, we'll start with, hmm, let's see Mr. Dave Spears, who's there in his synth cave. Well, I think this is synth cave B, isn't it? This isn't the actual, yes. this, this, this is the, 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 the second tier synth cave, right? Yeah, this is the Pauper Synth Cave. This is where he masterminds the uh, G-Force Empire uh, from, you know, the software empire, uh, and evaluates <laughs> beautiful poly... Is that the CS60 next to you? Yes, all nicely fixed. I couldn't work out. I was like, it's constantly going out of tune, and then it was like always out of tune, and then it was like some notes were out of tune, and then I called Kent and went, another one's gone wrong. And he said, oh, that sounds like a da 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 So, yes, he's had a lot of soldering to do. So it came back and it works beautifully now. So thank you, Kent, That's again. Excellent. Well, Kent, yeah, no, he had a We're look at... We're kind of constantly uh, doing swaps, see. He, he had a look at my CS15, uh, uh, which is a lot better, but it's still got a crackly VCA, and I didn't have the heart to say, Kent, it's still crackling a bit, uh, but um, he might find out. I'll, 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 maybe next year sometime I'll get round to it. But anyway, Dave, um, this is uh, when do you stop for Christmas? Are you stopping soon, or are you kind of uh, powering on through? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, lots to do. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't get all festived up. Um, we don't really have anything festive at the minute. My missus doesn't buy Christmas trees. She kind of does uh, in fact we've got a really cool thing it's like loads of lampshades with the uh, fabric taken off and they're all stacked up and lights and stuff so that's about as christmas is we've got normally i've got my hat, about the place yeah oh well no i, I did I, look i'll fly the flag i will fly the flag it's no problem and here i am ho 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 um uh, anyway <laughs> up next guest let's say hello to mr matthew hodson who is uh, there in uh, his studio um, in brighton area matthew of course hello uh, producer, educator works at bim uh, I yeah. keep saying course director. Is that about right? I forget what it course sounds good. Leader, course leader. Course, course director. director yeah. yeah. I like the sound of I'm that. Not, I'm not in charge of the whole thing, but they, they put me in charge of a few things. But yeah, I run the course, the music production course, uh, the degree. I feel like I should have had my Santa's hat on now. I feel really I'm bad. I'm so sorry. I didn't. Well, you're new, really, relatively. You haven't done a Christmas I before, am, aren't so. I? So you're a yeah. Sonic, Sonic Talk Christmas virgin, as it were. Yeah. So yeah. next well, year you'll know. It's, <laughs> I've made it onto the Christmas special, so Woo yes. Yeah, like now you, you can. Yeah, now you can. Uh, now you can end your year with a bang or a, a f more like a damp squib, perhaps. But I oh. hope I'm glad. Thank yeah. you for joining us, Matthew. It's been uh, no, a nice one. Good to be back. To have you, and and of course Thanks. we have uh, Mr. Gaz Williams, who's got a sort of mm. Christmassy jacket. Uh, yeah, yes. that's I'm a, I'm a, and a sort of Santery. Gaz Williams, yeah, of course, uh, bass player, yeah. music I'm producer. And all of those I'm the Santery. I'm the Santa. I'm the most Santery, I reckon, out of us lot. Now I've got, I've got, I've got a pun. Hold on, I'm thinking there needs to be like a Santa convention held on Santorini. <laughs> Santorini, the island of Santorini, doesn't it? Surely. Have you seen if, that Santa? All those Santas having a scrap that's doing the rounds on, so, like a load yeah, of them in the street. I've seen <laughs> no, that. I, haven't. Right. I don't know what on earth, I don't know what on earth went on, but it's about twenty Santas all like having a big yeah. punch up in the street. <laughs> I know, I haven't seen that. I did see the one where the guy is obviously uh, uh, coming to a little island uh, by boat, and he sort of leaps off, trips over, and falls flat face first yeah. into the sea. And one. it's a very uh, a sort of, it's not a very elegant um, arrival. But and I hope the presents were okay. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining. 
join us. Um, Gaz, of course, uh, you, you'll see him featured in our Cubase 10 review, oh, yeah. which went up today. That oh, right. Yeah. So that was, uh, you, it? Can, you can check that out where you were yep. appraising the various different and your, your fabulous Christmas ditty, which I think uh, everybody should hear. <laughs> Oh, it, was that we, we, it was the yeah. uh, the online order Christmas lament. I think we uh, we ended up calling it. But yes, <laughs> yeah. great fun. Yes. Okay, yeah. so uh, well, there's not much of an agenda this week because I mean, there's not an awful lot of massive news that comes out just before Christmas. I mean, you do get kind of minor software updates and all that kind of thing. So let's see what the uh, if I reach into my Santa sack of topics now. There, there's a Christmas allegory for you. Um, <laughs> what could we possibly yeah. have? Ah, well, I've. Uh, uh, the virtual pulling out of the... Yeah, here we go. Here's a topic. Right. I guess 2019 highlights might be a good place to start because ultimately, um, you know, we're at the end of the year. We didn't do any awards or anything. Um, so, uh, or, 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 you know, roundups. We do occasionally do those things, but uh, we didn't this year. So I'm just wondering if anybody... doesn't Anybody got any kind of uh, music tech highlights for the year? I'm going to start with mine, if you don't mind, because I, what I did is I went back and looked at all the kind of Sonic Lab reviews. Because the, the thing is, when you... When you just review things, they don't always become something that you would use. So they're not always fresh in your mind, you know. So that's my excuse. So I went back to look at all the reviews and all the all the Sonic Labs, and I thought, right, the first highlights. And I would have to say, I think um, the Behringer Neutron actually featured quite highly in there because it's a great sounding synth. It was one of the first real budget, uh, you know, announcements of, of coming out from the the Behringer guys, and it sounds really damn good. And I don't know if anybody else has tried that. So that was one for me. Uh, the other one was Loop Cloud two and two point oh at three yeah, yeah. two point oh which I think has just come out. That's really cool with user samples. In it's fact, really we've got a video we've got a video coming up, uh, and that's probably something to try over the holidays. Actually, it's all totally free, and you can now add your own user samples, which means all of the samples on your drive get indexed. Uh, and tagged and it sort of auto tags as well and auto kind of has a go at things and you can use it so that it would run all of your projects anything you record it'll analyze the audio there if you tell it in a folder and console that's really neat and uh, yeah that was it so i'm gonna I, those, those are a couple for me so uh, let's see uh, gaz gaz you're looking expectant like you might have something to add i, I do hope so because i know it's a bit of a big topic isn't it it's quite difficult well I I think it's been a great year. There's been some amazing things this year. And I mean, obviously doing what we do, we kind of get exposed to loads of it. So actually picking a, a, a best is, is actually quite tricky. So I've got a few, but I mean, for me, it's like a toss up at the moment between the, I think, well, it's one by here, uh, the Medusa, um, mm -hmm. which I think kudos to Polyend and Dreadbox for making something that is genuinely new and different. I think uh, it's had a little bit of a stormy sort of entrance into the world, but um, there's a new, I've got a beta firmware at the moment uh, that again, just, it, it's just getting better and better all the time. And it's such an original idea in many ways. There's so many fresh and interesting kind of um, a collision Com of yeah, all sorts I, 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 of I take your point. This is mm, what it looks like, I, in case anybody's wondering what it is. This is the Dreadbox Medusa. <laughs> available cool. on Sweetwater. It's about 1100 bucks. but there you go. Yeah, we, we reviewed that, and I must admit, I did like it. I think I mm. think at the time, I was pre... You know, it was early days in the firmware, so perhaps early there were firmware. some things that hadn't been yeah. totally I, sussed. And... And I think that's that's the you know slightly unfortunate thing when it's when it came out. I think the firmware has gone through several iterations so far, and I know that there's a lot more to come. Uh, and that's been really cool. But the other one, it's a toss up between, is the the Noodler, the or the, it's spelled N D I. Really, you've really you've really um, taken a shine to that, uh, have you? Okay. I'm gonna go live tonight, 8 p.m. GMT, with a live stream of the Noodler. So if anyone wants to tune in on my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be sort of demonstrating it a little bit because i think why i really like that is uh basically what it is just for those of you who don't know it's essentially a midi generator i guess it doesn't create sounds of its own it just um it's like it's like a an ar super duper arpeggiator drone machine it does a bunch of things uh but it's the way it all kind of comes together and like for the for people who've got similar setups to me which is like lots of um desktop -y sort of synths and uh, certainly well it would work with in many you can use it just with yeah so it's too. a midi midi kind of composition and sort of jamming it, engine right jamming engine yeah and i think where i particularly love it and uh, and i'll definitely get into this tonight is that um with all these great hands-on synths when you've got a bunch of them you know you've only got so many hands and ah so this really can play them all and you can then just tweak 
Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It's like right, a that's super yeah, helpful, super helpful <laughs> set of helping hands, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it just it takes it really does take you places. I, I mentioned it, I think, like last week. What's really interesting is when you start applying LFOs to change the kind of key and the scale and the chords and different things like that. So you can have it. So that's just, your that. Oh, well, so anyway, that'll be yeah. on your YouTube channel tonight. I'm getting reports yes. from the chat room. I'm very sorry. Uh, lots of people apparently turning to stone because I showed them a picture of the Medusa. <laughs> Bada bing. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Ah, yeah. uh, yeah. Mr. Spears, that groan <laughs> can introduce you to this. I, I, I know it's, uh, I, I mean, we're we're probably a little bit um, different main gas because we get to see a lot of things because we review, whereas perhaps, you know, f from your point of view, it's not quite, not quite such an easy thing because it may be something you've been introduced to this year that, that wasn't actually new but is new to you in the year, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I live in the 70s, so it's quite difficult <laughs> for me to transport through time into the modern the day. track um, set player. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I track cartridge quadraphonic sound system. Um, peak, obviously. Uh, but that wasn't 20, that was 2017, wasn't it? That came out. So not officially 2018, although the firmware comes out, I think it's today. Uh, oh, the 1.2, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of about as modern as I get. And then you and Gaz recommended uh, the Ventress, which I bought and like Ooh, a lot, yeah. the jewelry. That's a good thing. tool. Yeah, which I definitely use. Uh, and other than that, uh, blimey, I've got to find a way of plugging something of ours. Oh, Vol yeah. 4, Vol, the Vol 4 Streetly tapes. They're the best thing that happened in 2018, certainly to me, because they were actually, in truth, they were a complete surprise. The Streetly guys contacted us and went, We found a load more stuff in the back of the cupboard. And I thought, Yeah, I send it through anyway, I'll have a listen. And there were some things in there that were just work that had never been released. Uh, these string inversions, which kind of all work around one particular key, and they were just magic. And as soon as I heard those, I was like, we're doing this. Uh, what else? I think that's... Oh, and I've done a CD, huh? uh, which I handily have here, which it won't be out till 2019, but that's quite good. That's an old school book. I, was a quite, I wasn't a good pupil. Uh, and then there's loads... Of... I like this, though. Look, that looks like a record. Oh, nice. That's I good. That's a neat touch. Yeah. Hey, look, I can play it. Look. I've got a little bit of the intro to that. This is the intro to one of your tracks, which I I love. Yeah, that's very. Yeah. That's the 70s. Oh. I like that. <laughs> Check that out. And then there's. Look. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, like, so yeah. my, my parents have kept all my old school reports and books. Now, why they did this, I have no idea. I think what it was was because I wasn't a model pupil and most of the reports weren't good. I think they kept them in order to show to me when I had kids and they were playing up. But thankfully for me, my daughter's been a straight A student and graduated with the first. So that opportunity never arose. But it's been interesting reading um, things like uh, Must this try is the harder. second time. Well, no, this is brilliant. This is the second time you have gaily handed in your book without doing any homework. What kind of game do you think you're playing? There you go. <laughs> so that's all nice. included. Excellent. So, so you yes. get the, it's a brief history of Dave, effectively. That's well, great. It's, it's kind of, the whole concept is about growing up in the 70s or not, not growing up in the 70s. So yeah, it goes through all the styles. So that was the glam track and then there's a four part epic prog track and there's loads of stuff. So yes, that's nice. 2019 sort of. Nice. Well, that, I like the sound of that. I can't wait to hear those. I know you've been working on it for quite a long time. Okay, Matt, uh, over to you now, because, uh, I mean, I guess you get, like, pitched Ooh. a lot of things, because people are probably trying to, um, well, A, you're you're a modular user, so you must be uh, fairly well glued to the um, the pages when it comes to uh, new stuff, and also you probably get pitched a load yeah. of stuff at uh, educational yeah. colleges. People are always trying to get you to use things, right? Yeah, but I'm I'm always on the lookout as well. I go I go to as many conferences as I can throughout the year, music technology conferences. If you see me, by the way, come say hello. Um, and I'm usually just checking out to see what's out, new hardware, software, what's on the horizon. It's just important that we keep using the most up to date things and looking at the future of music production. Um, so yes, you're right. There's probably some. I won't go on too much about modular, as always. Um, but this was pretty cool. This came out this year. This is the. This was um, for output complex envelope module right. uh, by Chaos Devices called Zadar or Zadar, which is really cool. Um, when the screen's on, you can see all the waveforms on it, and and it does really complex 
waveforms. Great little thing. Really, really cool. That came out. Um, Mutable Instruments did uh, some great oscillators called Platts. Uh, yeah, that was a big one, wasn't it? I've just had made. Yeah. We're I've lucky just to get them because this made. stuff sells out so quick, doesn't it? Yeah, well, the, these I've just had made, which are in a 6 HP, so they're made really small. A uh, guy made them for me over in Spain, and they just arrived this week. So I use them now for polyphonic voices. So I've got three three voices, but there's so many different waveforms and, and timbre you can pull out from them. It's great. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, in terms of hardware... Uh, hardware small synths i think sculpt was cool by modal yeah i was gonna for, say uh, that I, I found so it's got some lovely sweet spots really is quite yeah. a nice synth you know for the category of small but powerful and goes in your backpack and just sounds awesome definitely and for the price um i just bought myself this as a little christmas present which is the roland vt4 mm. because i can't sing um, this is perfect for me because it does vocoding, it does harmonizing, and it does that via MIDI. Um, and I'm going to integrate this with the module. I'm going to run it through some VCAs here and kind of sequence the VCAs open and closes as I'm using vocals. So I'm going to try out some vocals over Christmas. That's something new for me to do. Wow, um, okay. And then, then, then there was some software. Of course, I think, didn't Ableton 10 came out this yep, year, really true. this year? And I yep. think that was a really good update. I mean, I'm I'm big time Ableton user now anyway, but um, I just think that's still fantastic the way it works with Max for Live and, and all that kind of world if you're into it. Um, and also, Autoria brought out the Buchla, um VST this year, I believe. I think and so, that, yeah. I just can't get my head yeah. around the way that that kind of synthesis works. So it, it, I, <laughs> I <know>. tried. <laughs> I bought, I checked myself to it um, on Black, uh, what is it, Black Friday. Yeah, I bought it on Black Friday, and I I just think it's a really good one to sort of sit down and play around with. And particularly if you're interested in about working with a Buchler and you don't want to spend 10, 20 grand on whatever or whatever they are, you can just get the plug-in, try that out. Um, While you're saving up, then, yeah. Yeah, why are you saving up? And then I think VCV rack. Yeah. That was something that came out this year, along with Cherry Audio's vaulted modular as well. So it's been a bit of a year for kind of like VST modular stuff that came out. And they've both got some uh, pros and cons of each. They're, they're quite different. Obviously, there's a lot of free stuff you can get in VCV rack. Um, but vaulted modular's got this ability to build your own custom modules in there now for free. And that kind of thing. If you want to start selling them, you you then pay for a, a kind of additional upgrade to do that. Um, but I think there've there've been some really interesting software stuff. So yeah, yeah. Ableton, the Buchler, VCV rack, cool, excellent. Yeah, I, I, I noticed it, nobody, men nobody mentioned the Moog One. Funnily enough, which is which oh, yeah. is weird because it's like it was such a milestone <laughs> in terms of release, but it doesn't seem to have I'm quite. Yeah, we, we can't, none of us can afford because, it, so we just go, yeah, yeah we'll, exactly. we'll ignore that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are, I mean, like, Electron smashed it out of the park with the Digitone, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, right. That was that was this year, wasn't it, as well? So yeah, there's, I suppose so. DOPZ as well, which is a review coming soon. I'm enjoying that. That's another one this year as well, isn't it? That's Loads true. of things this year. Well, I mean, to be fair, yeah. it was actually announced about four years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's sort of, yes, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that's mm. almost, almost back to the 1970s, Dave. Yeah, it's finally been released. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent um so yeah that, well there's a i suppose yeah there's a lot of stuff i mean I, who knows what the next year will bring because obviously 2019 another year it seems to me at the moment it's wavetables i keep getting i'm probably one or two mm. announcements a week of a vst to do with wavetable synthesis obviously the artoria uh, thing came out earlier the, the last week or something and i've been looking at that it's actually quite good and then there's some other stuff there's the yuhi diva got some wavetable capabilities a lot mm. actually which is supposed to be really good dave i don't suppose you're working on wavetable synth that would probably be the uh the, the signifier just to how mainstream wavetables become but I, I don't know you're not are you oh no i can't say anything if i say anything they'll just beat me up <laughs> and then Father Christmas won't visit this year, and I'll be depressed. Uh, not really, no. 
Okay, that's fine. Well, we, it's it's unofficial. You heard it. You didn't hear it here, folks, as it were. Um, there's also, I think, there's a new synth coming. I mean, Nectar are doing something, uh, something called Bolt, which uh, I believe Ooh. is uh, is coming out soon. I think that's just there was a leak, wasn't there? Let me see if I've got it somewhere. I'm trying to find it now. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. This was on. Um, this was on uh, Gear News, and this is uh, Julian Wasserman playing some stuff on the bolt. And I think the news of that is going to be coming out like real soon. I I could tell you more, but I've been told I can't because I had to sign an NDA. But a couple of days, and they'll be it'll all be out there. But that's quite interesting because up to now they've basically been hardware, haven't they? So this is a kind of new direction for them. Um, and, and so I don't know. Yeah, in terms of next year, I wonder what the trend. That's another thing I suppose we could do. I mean, this is a signifier. I'm, I'm making up these topics as I go along. Um, <laughs> trends for next year. What do you think is going to happen mm. next year in this uh, in this area? Now that's an inter- that's the sort of thing that people ask me, and I yeah. honestly I'm not sure if I have any idea whatsoever. It's really difficult to kind uh, of to call that one. I think we're going to see a few more polysynths enter the market because yeah. we've had loads of mo- mo- monosynths, and I think some of these Behringer clones are going to uh, 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 models are going to come out. We're going to see them actually. Yeah. The MS 101s making it into the channels, so there's going to be yeah. a kind of a, a lot of low price mono sense coming into the market and i was thinking about this the other day you know that the 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 explosion in mono sense makes kind of a certain amount of sense because to buy a complex synthesizer if you're buying a polyphonic one it's a lot of money whereas if you want some hands-on stuff a mono synth makes a lot of sense because it's a small thing that you can actually get creative with and, and tweak and you've probably got a lot more parameters than you would do with a poly because poly by its very nature tends to be simplified because it, a lot of the places it can go are not really appropriate for polyphonic work but then if you're using polyphonic synthesizers you might well use plugins because you can use more instances of them and you've got more kind of scalability of patches so i wonder whether we're going to see um some more polys affordable polys come in that start to challenge that kind of notion i don't know <clears throat> Um, I, I'd go to you, Dave. Um, do you think we're going to see some more hardware polys, like a, a more sort of affordable ones? Because for a, a time, it, 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 you know, that that affordable side of things is is a difficult slot to fill. We've seen the, you know, obviously the Moog one, which is massively expensive. Or maybe we're just going to see some really big, expensive powerhouses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know of two things that are happening next year, which are both going to be. Pretty brilliant, but obviously I can't say any more than that at all. Uh, that's and they're hardware. That's hardware, and they're pretty exciting. Uh, but yes, I don't know. I'm not even sure whether I agree with you on the mono versus poly thing either. Okay. But I'll have to think about that a bit more because actually I like I did... really complex poly, poly synths, so that you've got the versatility. It's like, oh well, I'll use it in mono mode or in unison mode, and I'll get those sounds out of it, or I use it in poly mode and get those sounds out of it. I mean, for me, this playability has become... Actually, what is really fascinating is I, I, somebody said, uh, emailed me and said that they'd looked up a really old uh, Sonic Talk. And it and was we were a banging day. on about the same stuff. <laughs> well, no, but it was very, very pre-analog anything new coming out. I mean, it was really fascinating. It was the day I'd got, I'd taken delivery, in fact, I remember it quite well, of a Profit 10. And I had no room in my old garage, and Chris had kind of bought it as a bit of a wind-up, really, more than anything else, knowing full well that it was going to be delivered to the house about 10 minutes before the podcast started. And if it was left in the hall, my missus would have gone completely insane. So I had to kind of wrestle it into the room. But actually, what we were talking about it as a result of his email, and there was a bit of a dialogue. And we were both saying, you know, isn't it amazing how the kind of analogue explosion has happened since, since then? And now it's really, really ubiquitous. But, yeah. uh, you know, back then it really wasn't. I, I don't remember how many years ago that was, but it is amazing. And it's mm. si- it shows no signs of abating. I mean, the Moog one's interesting, but it's... Uh, it's it's, it's, it's rarefied, isn't it? It's not the sort of thing that many people are going to be able to afford. Although, But mm. when you when you check the kind of the activity, well, I suppose you would on the Moog one uh, Facebook group, you'd see lots of people have got it. But then I guess they're by their very nature, because they're, <laughs> they're in the group, it's more likely. Um, I don't know, Matt, what do you think? What do you think's coming? Yeah, uh, well, on my little podcast video thing that I do once a month, I was talking to Ben Divkid and Nathan Moody um, about 
about where things might be going in this sort of world, obviously in the modular world and what have you. And we're seeing some really interesting developments, particularly there's this new, um, some really powerful modules coming out. There's one on Kickstart right now by Percussa, which is it's probably one oh, of the most the advanced. SS something or other, is it? The yeah, DSP the thing? MSSP, which uh, they did a big one. They did a Kickstarter earlier this year, which which made it, and it's a massive, it's really big, massive, massive module. Now they've done a baby version, uh, which comes with a Mac and PC editor. It's about six days away from its Kickstarter, and I, I'm, I've backed this one because it's so it is so powerful it's one of those modules it could be a drum machine it can do granular stuff it can do wavetable it can do nice chords and poly stuff uh, so i've just seen a lot of that and i'm also i'm just interested to see where this goes now you know are we at saturation point in the modular world of of how many modules are out there and buying and selling this there's the second on second hand market's just crazy now in terms of to, if you want to sell anything, it takes a lot longer than it used to. It used to just stick stuff up on eBay and it'd, it'd be gone the next day. Now it could take a lot longer. So I'm interested to see where we're going to go with this sort of power and capability, particularly of this this percussor, and um, just seeing seeing what people are coming up with, and what ideas have got in that world. Hmm. Um, I also, think maybe we'll see some maybe we'll see some cross cross pollination. So there's sort of something that bridges the gap between the modular and the the rest of the world a bit more as well. Yeah, I hope so. I, we've, I mean, we've kind of got that. And this is maybe something that came out this year that deserves a mention is the FH2 by Ex Expert Sleepers, which is a module that converts MIDI to CV and it's it's expandable up to 64 voices. It's it's really good and it comes with a an editor that you, you can program. I've been using it with the Pioneer SP16 recently, um, and it's just awesome. But I definitely would like to see, I'd like to see manufacturers for mixers getting together with the modular people and looking at making something that works for them. So not necessarily something that has to go in a rack, but not something that's a DJ mixer either. It's, it could be standalone, um, but it has it has lots of IO on it that works maybe with CV and MIDI and effects. I, I, yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you. I think what they should do, if you don't mind me butting in there, is to create something that's actually part of a Eurorack case. So the mixer is in the lid and it flips down and it's there. What? So you end up with, you know, you flip it down and the mixer's there and then all your modules are up there and that's it. And there's maybe some busing that goes in between it. That would make sense. That's, an, that's a great idea. Just, yeah, something like that. You know, <laughs> okay. the case is the mixer, that that sort of thing. Should we hmm. should we get it on, start this on Kickstarter? Yeah, it might be a bit of work to go before we get there, but okay. we could do some maybe some drawings on some napkins and put it up there and just sort of go <laughs> aim for, I don't know, what should we say, like a couple of million or something? And then... Yeah, By the time we've yeah. raised that sort of cash, we'll we'll have enough to pay someone to actually execute the idea, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right, I've got some napkins. We'll get this started. Um, the the other thing is as well, you know, oh my, you know, I've been buying synths for so long, and crikey, you know, I kind of feel like do we do we need any more synths? Have we got enough synths out there? Um, what we're we looking for in new synthesizers and drum machines when they come out, we've got so much you can get you can get out of them i think the big thing i think dave mentioned this briefly was this kind of playability within them you know and i've talked about this before about things just coming out with keyboards and a few sliders and dials i'm just looking at interesting ways of really someone who's performing with a keyboard or a synthesizer being able just by by routing making complex routings you know turn one dial which can manipulate a lot of modulation and it's very integrated with the playability, you know, that just um, that interface, just getting that interface right, I think, and modernizing that a little bit more. Does you can keep you can keep chucking synthesizers out all you want about polys, monophonic, Behringer doing their clones, whatever. But I just think the next step is is looking at some kind of performative, real performative. Mm, um, yeah, maybe that's the answer. That kind of maybe thing. that's the answer. I know, Gaz, I know you like to perform, so maybe that's something you would concur with. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think just rolling back a little bit to what Dave was saying, because of all this analog stuff, you know, we've been spoiled for choice with analog in recent years. It feels like the kind of there's been like a thaw in 
sort of VA and that kind of thing and actually having combined digital and analog situations like the Medusa, which is, a you know, obviously three analog oscillators and three digital oscillators. So I think we're going to see more digital analog hybrid things, you know, where there's an, you know, there's an embracing of digital, whereas, you know, before when we didn't have the analog choices, we were kind of um, looking at the shortcomings of digital. So I think we're going to see more things which are actually exploiting digital. You know, um, the GR1 came out, I think that was this year as well, which um, granular, uh, really great hands-on granular desktop. Uh, I'm all about the desktop modules, you see. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hands-on granular stuff, I think, is still there's still a lot of mileage in there. The GR one's brilliant, but I still think there's there's room for more things like that. Um, FM was like has had a fantastic res resurgence, hasn't it? In the last in the last couple of years, in the Digitone, the Yamaha Modi X, and uh, so various other things. So I'm wondering whether more things which are you know possibly hybrids of FM and digital, yeah, well, obviously FM digital and analog just this mm. idea that more more combina com combinations of things less of a kind of snobbery around pure analog and a little bit more embracing of you know mi mixing up the different uh elements i think i reckon there'll be something like that more things like that coming um also uh i'd like to see more mpe actually backing up what Matt's saying about, you know, performative things more now MPE has been standardized and, you know, like we mentioned yeah. in the Cubase feature there, Cubase 10 has got, uh, has kind of got like an, an MPE native sort of support for MPE devices. Uh, so I'd like to see more, more MPE things and that could be all sorts of things, couldn't it? You know, it doesn't have to be just Roly esque or Linstrument type stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm keen to see, people exploiting what mpe could actually be you know in, in in ways that we haven't even you know thought about so yeah i think that those, yeah those i think that's good things. actually that reminded me you mentioned that um the continuum um mini that came out with just got the synth oh, yeah. engine built into it i oh, saw some yeah, videos yeah. that loop pop did uh yeah. and i hadn't i hadn't really because i um it was filmed at Super. I didn't actually shoot the video, so it kind of I didn't really get it. And when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, that's a really cool idea!" And it's the yeah. the, the mini one has got the the sound source built in, and it's actually uh, a decent. You know, it's, it's it's affordable, but it's very expressive. It also does MPE, but I just thought I'd mention that in there. Um, yes, Scott from Canada in the chat room says it's time for commercial, Nick. You're absolutely right, and I'm going to bring in a little <laughs> word from our our friends at Isotope. So please enjoy. RX continues to be the industry standard and leader in audio repair for music and post-production. And with RX7, we've introduced groundbreaking new ways to quickly and easily fix and manipulate audio. Take the game-changing Repair Assistant, an intelligent helper that can detect noise, clipping, clicks, hum, and more. Also new in RX7 is Music Rebalance, a powerful source separation tool. Drums too loud, vocals not loud enough, Let's fix that. You can also create instrumental versions of songs by removing the vocal elements. You can now alter the pitch without affecting the timing of your audio, and conversely, alter the time without affecting the pitch with the new variable time and variable pitch modules. Using the new dialog contour, you can improve the performance of a line or even create a new performance by altering the pitch contour of the dialog, therefore adjusting the intonation of the speaker and introducing Dialog Dereverb, a module powered by machine learning to reduce the presence of reverberations around dialog. RX7, a new frontier in audio repair. Exactly, and you can get hold of Isotope RX technology if you just go to isotope.com and check it out. There's a 10-day uh, unlimited demo, which is well worth checking out. Uh, we ran a competition last week for uh, somebody to win, and in fact, we have a winner, uh, which is our supercomputer picked, and it's, I keep seeing it says Omnipulse, but it actually says On Impulse. Uh, on Impulse said, uh, can it... Uh, sent a, a string of rather interesting icons and said, can it fix that? RX can fix it, RX7. So on, on the impulse, if you get in touch, uh, we can also uh, 
get your copy of RX-7 to you. And we have another competition for this week. This will be the last one that will be announced on the January the 2nd. Uh, we're looking for, I went Christmassy, I went hashtag Christmas mixes, hashtag RX-7 at at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So if you want to enter to win uh, your New Year copy of our Isotope RX-7, we're looking for the hashtag Christmas Mixes and the hashtag RX-7 to at Isotope and at Sonic State. There we go. I think I got that out. Uh, which brings me sort of rather neatly, and I did actually start on this. The, the, God, that first topic used the whole show, the obligatory Christmas songs topic. We do occasionally have this. And there was a piece on, I'm just trying to look for it now. It was actually on uh, Synthtopia initially, uh, and it's a Christmas AI generated tunes. And they, they basically, what they did is they th this company um, fed like 100 MIDI files of Christmas hits into some sort of AI that they were running on a massive GPU super powerful Amazon uh, instance, GPU instance, which is super computer. GPUs are often used for like really powerful real-time kind of neural networking kind of stuff. And they came up with a bunch of Christmas, potential Christmas hits, uh, which I think they could probably work on the voicing a little bit. So this is all AI created. Don't like that one. That's got a bit more creases, Christmassy to it. Basically, I, I must admit, I listened to all of them and I just thought, I'm re if that's the best AI, AI has got to offer, then we're doomed. I thought, as a, as a, <laughs> I thought, you know, we were going to be getting into some real kind of Ian M. Banks kind of fantastic kind of new future, but that just sounds like there's no creative merit in any of that stuff. Um, I, and I don't know, but I mean, I suppose the other thing is, is you know, this kind of ge generates the whole concept of synthy Christmas hits. Uh, but let's let's start, Gaz. I don't know what do you. I mean, the whole AI thing. I mean, sometimes you can hear things that really, you know, it captures some kind of emotive or creative essence. But this felt really bereft of any of that yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because, like, I'm sorry to mention the noodler again, um, but I was thinking about like kind of generative music and how um how something like the noodler isn't really a gen you know you feel like you're kind of more in control that it's doing what you want it to do as opposed to maybe setting up a few i mean i'm guessing with a these ai things you know you, you you're defining certain parameters and then letting it just sort of figure it figure it all out um but uh yeah i mean it, it's it's a thing about um that expressivity that is the essential human thing is the thing that these ai things always seem to be missing don't they they seem to have lots yeah of it the... seems to be a mathematical kind of uh, exercise doesn't it yeah yeah um go oh. What's the question again? <laughs> I don't know. I just had but this great topic that just came. Great topic, a uh, uh, potential topic for the uh, for the show title, which was Merry I Christmas. I like oh, that. I might God. have to use that. Oh, like that was. Oh, I, I'm just going to go back to that because I, so, okay. I, I need to credit that. I can't remember who wrote it down. It's gone past yeah. so quickly. Thought Merry Christmas, very good. So that might well be the mm. title. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, AI seems to be. It seems to be doing very well in sort of semantics and language. You know, that's that seems yeah, to be yeah. something that it can it could do because it's. I suppose that there's no. I mean, with voices, like, I suppose there's there's yeah. emotive quality, but it's it's language is easier. Yeah, music though, isn't it? It's all it is about trying to communicate something and trying to express that thing and uh, and and I, you know, what is the computer trying to express? I mean, you can. It, it's a funny thing, isn't it? It's almost like the missing bit. It can do all of it except for that sense. Well, of it's for, yeah, narrative. It's, but or, it's funny, isn't it? Because if you think of AI as an extraction of technology, you know, I mean, arpeggiators, sequences, you know, they are all over modern music everywhere and that's in many cases generative it's just you play some notes in and you kind of mess around with the algorithm that then spits them out the other end I, i'm not sure what do you think about that dave because i mean the, do, could you level could you argue that ai is already being employed in some way i mean or or what is ai i suppose when it comes to music mm -hmm. creation oh i know two big totally questions <laughs> well it is in journalism i know that i went to a meeting uh, not that long ago a big talk where they're actually AI machines are churning out uh, articles in the style of certain writers. And that has all sorts of implications for, you know, whether it's Busted truthfully damn. written, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Or truthfully, well, it would be nice, wouldn't it, if you could do a review and it would come up. You just press the button and it would go through a series of routines and write something in your style of prose. But yeah, no, that has all sorts of dodgy implications, I think. Uh, I think Gaz is right, but I would, I would refer to it more as taste. I have never heard anything tasteful come out of AI. Uh, I just, but I suppose that's I just, I've never heard. I've never. So I've never heard anything tasteful coming out of me, though, either, though. So that would what? kind of come to that. <laughs> yeah. so, well, hey. There you go. You see, AI by its nature is not self-deprecating. So maybe it needs to learn ah. a little bit of self-deprecation, self-deprecation. in order ah, yeah. to become more human. I would like this. Well, I only like this because actually on Christmas Day, my missus goes, I'll put some Christmas music on. And I've, and I've now bookmarked this and I'm just going to have it on fucking rotate the entire day <laughs> until they plead with me to turn it off. <laughs> it's very simple and basic. I mean, it was all just sort of 16th gated kind of stuff without actually any um, lyrical expression or phrasing or anything. So I suppose that's that's not really helping much. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm the same. You know, I like it, but we must be getting it in programming like AI. Uh, Spotify must employ it in terms of uh, playlist creation. I'm sure iTunes must do where you go Christmas hits or whatever. And it comes from sort of cloud or cloud source data, which is maybe tagged or titled. And then it just goes, yeah, this sounds these are probably Christmas tunes and, you know, maybe figures out the beats and, and the tempo. I mean, I'm sure it happens all the time. I know, Matt, I mean, is this something that you cover in education? I mean, because it's a weird, in a weird way, it's the future, I suppose, to, to, to some degree, mm -hmm. whether or not we adopt it is, is, is a, a questionable. Yeah. yeah. And Dave's right, you know, particularly in journalism and we, we run journalism courses as well. This is, we're certainly looking at it there. We are looking at a music business in terms of, analytics and data and actually how that is being used and generated using ai um and then there's of course in in music and um yeah you could argue you know things like um your auto tuning arpeggiation sequencing all that kind of thing is an element of that maybe a precursor to where we're going with with ai they're certainly getting AI right in some places, though, in, you know, in the cyber world with um, with robots and um, data mining and that kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose that, so. That, that's all working. But it's amazing how we can do that. And yet they can only come up with music that sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really struggle with that. You've got machines that that scare the hell out of me that you think are going to be like Terminator, you know, turn it, taking over the world. And I suspect there's probably more resources like going into the Terminator sort of type stuff than there is in <laughs> emulating Christmas music. But yeah, I take your yeah. point. I mean, it's not quite um, Shekin Stevens yet, is it? Or Slade um, by the sounds of it. But no, it you can hear isn't. what they've done. They've, they've, they've kind of, they've kind of inputted the kind of intervals. You can hear the intervals there in the music that they're using in the notes. I think, and you, that, yeah, and and our cultural understanding of what we think of what as sounds Christmassy, traditional, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, it's a starting point, but I think I think things like this are exponential. I think they get better a lot quicker than they, you know, than in a linear form. They just AI and music. I think is, and this is maybe going back to something we talked about something for 2019, even 2010. I. I would say that we're going to see the a growth in this and a, a big development in this. And it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if manufacturers out there are looking at should we be including AI more into our groove boxes, our drum machines, our synthesizers, our software. You know. Uh, yeah, I suppose how... it depends where the interfacing is because I mean, you know, like Loop Cloud yeah. uses uh, AI and and, and semantic yes. stuff for, for analyzing tags and for analyzing audio to create auto tags for their stuff. I'm just throwing that back in yeah. there. Um, so I, I suppose, yeah, but I, I mean, the other thing is if you take a classic melody and tune with feeling and expression and have AI arrange it in a more in in various different styles then that that could certainly and, and i'm sure is already working so that kind of the the adaption of the initial human input or the initial human expression that that's where ai can work but you know to the sort of like press a button and make me a hit record isn't i'm really keen to uh, to to um explore what an auto depreciate uh, algorithm might do to your 
your ma- your music, you know, whether <laughs> one has it all to automatically built in or whether, you know, what it would do, you know. So if you're try if you're being perhaps a bit too bombastic and confident in your vocal delivery, <laughs> it would sort of it would shut you down a bit and maybe close the filter yeah. down on that strident synth a little bit more so it all becomes a bit more muted and less kind of up front and a bit more sort of Oh, I don't know about this. It's all right. <laughs> I, mean, I can certainly yeah. see it in terms of mixes and stuff, you know, with sibilance and various things. I'm very interested in it in terms of uh, drum machines and uh, rhythms because actually I think that's quite a good starting block. Because it is mathematical, because you can isn't it? Start yeah. with a very, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's very, you know, and you start with a kind of basic thing and then based on the interpretations, you know, a million years ago, I used to record loads of great drummers on MIDI kits and then I'd have to go in and edit it and whatnot. And you could see where someone was pushing it or where someone was pulling it back a little bit. And actually you can turn a very straight groove into something really interesting. And I like the idea of something, you know, giving you options, but also based on the way a real drummer plays a real kit, you know, and this, you don't have a cymbal crash at the same time as a hi hat is played and all that kind of stuff. Well, those uh, sort of rules. Yeah. Yeah. Two arms. yeah. So yeah, right. just interpreting those and, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think for me that's interesting. Uh, melodically, I still believe, well, in fact, with all of it, I still believe that you've got to have a human at the end of the chain to act mm-hmm. as a kind of taste filter, I suppose, to go, no, 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 or actually that's pretty good. Yeah, it's interesting though, Matt, because, I mean, in modular world, auto-generative stuff, you know, where you're effectively setting up your big modular brain behind you to kind of do things that you're ultimately yeah. in control of. I mean, it's a lot of that is, isn't, I don't know if it's AI, it's like, or it is a, it is a, 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 um, a kind of computational process or electronic process. Yeah, it, it, it is completely, but it's, it's totally intentional and it's totally designed by the user at that time for a desired outcome, you know, in terms of how you're going to patch something to modulate something, to do something in a particular way. Um, Yes, it is doing it itself once you've set it up, but you've you've got to set it up. And then it'll only stay doing that until you ask it to do something else again. So yeah. it's not like, you know, unless it unless someone turns the power off or something like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but I don't I think it's definitely much more in some ways in in a lot of ways you know even when you go out on a stage with modular or whatever because you're not using a laptop and you're not using stems and that kind of thing and you're you're actually creating something there in front of people it actually, actually uh, this actually brings it more back to being a real played performative instrument that you're you're jamming with in the same way that you would with a guitar or bass or something mm, like that yeah so, yeah but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah, no, just I, I was AI really playing devil, world. devil's advocate there, really. But I just thought if yeah. there are any similarities. They're prob- you're prob- you're you're right, of course. Um, mm. I'm just wondering if there's any other topics because I I didn't really I I, I did oh yeah I, I tell you what let's uh, should we have a quick look at this this is something this this might actually fit with one of the other topics which was kind of what you're going to do over the Christmas holidays and one thing you could do is possibly this. Good morning, YouTube. Wow. Okay. This so is that from Leo video- makes. I had no Basically, idea made, so many people were into plate reverbs or Ikea. He made uh, a plate reverb out of an Ikea shelf, a contact mic, and a, 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 a pickup, I think. Uh, uh, that no, was a little amazing. And speaker. Thank you. If you're one I'll of the fast forward this because essentially you want to get to the money shot of this, which is where he's built this whole thing. Contact mics, it's about 100 bucks. And then it goes through the whole thing. This is Mark II because the first one sounded quite interesting. Now, if we go back to the. To the plate here. I actually don't have a good solution yet for dampening the plate. I have the same scarf as before, and what we can do is just sort of lean the scarf up against the plate. You can hear it. You can hear it cut down the reverb. That feels like a mm. classic. If, if if you have a man in a shed moment. That's kind mm-hmm. of what you could possibly do over the Christmas holidays. If you've kind of thought, yeah, right. you know, everything's stopping for a bit. I'm going to, you know, I finish my album. I'm going to make a plate reverb. I'm going to do what? Or, Dave, I'm going to... <laughs> what? I don't know, over the Christmas holidays. <laughs> do you have, like, oh. set aside for that Sorry. thing that you kind of... That, that's the <laughs> musical equivalent of Man in Shed that you want to just sort of have a bit of time to noodle or to explore a particular instrument or technique or thing or whatever. Uh, I've got three sessions booked between Christmas and New Year. Wow. That's pretty good. Where I will actually be playing real genuine keyboards with with somebody. Yeah, no, weird. 
uh, but he's coming over from France and we're going to have three days together uh, and it sounds like a completely epic track. I did talk to you and Gaz about it last week after the show, so but I can't say any more than that. But that's what I'm going to be doing and actually that's really exciting. Uh, although the, the depressing side is that the studio will need cleaning it's before. work, I suppose, yeah, <laughs> as well. Well, no, actually, I think it'll be really good fun because it's kind of, you know, it's non-techy and I'll just get to play. And this guy sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, well, that sounds so, good. Yes. That's a good idea. What about you guys? Have you got anything planned? i got a bunch of gigs, uh, which is always fun around this time. Um, I'm going to try and do more live streams. So, like, I am going to be streaming later today. I'm going to try and do more of that because I just really enjoy it. Um, hmm. But just, uh, and I just mentioned about this plate thing, though, is sort of, I remember years ago um, when I first experienced a, a real EMT plate, uh, having only experienced, I think, SPX 90 sort of <laughs> algorithm version of it before, but uh, and then hearing a real one and just, just how alive and sparkly yeah. and amazing yeah the real one was and just like oh and actually this studio sold it super cheap i mean super cheap god there was a you know everyone was just getting rid of them weren't they in the 90s well they just take up so much space don't they? huge yeah huge but wow i was just like i can't believe just how much that is beautiful and alive and and uh and i've never really experienced that i mean i don't know well, with you know, with algorithmic or even convolution versions of plates, this still is something maybe just. And I I feel the same about springs as well. To be fair, that um, I still haven't really experienced uh, emulated springs that are as uh, deep, dark, and as mysterious as the real thing. Um, and then with plates, it just it's a they are beautiful things. So this, I. I'm quite tempted to build one, actually. Well, you've got an idea just round the corner I, as well, haven't you? I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got very little excuse. Um, so I am, I am, I am quite tempted because uh, just because it is one of those things. I think because of the um, and the fact that you can manipulate it, like the guy was doing it with the scarf there. I wonder uh, what happens if you bend it. You know, like because when you no. bend metal, you get different properties. If you could have a way, yeah, right. so that it could so be still bend resonant it. but bendy as well, modulate like a modulation bend. Like Ooh, wobble, like yeah. wobble foot pedal. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. That sounds interesting. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I, I like the yeah. sound of that. That sounds like fun. I think what I, I don't have any plans for any of that stuff over Christmas. I think because I, I, a lot of my kind of DIY tendencies tend to get. Um, sort of used up for things like NAM, you know, where I examine our workflow and I go, hmm, it wouldn't be good if this was automated or this, we didn't have to do this anymore. We could just use something like that. So I've kind of get into all of that Raspberry Pi nonsense and writing things. And I've been using, um, trying to figure out what I can use the, the, the touch bar on this on this Mac for. And I've figured out a couple of things because one of the things, whenever we shoot something here, we record everything to disk, but we always keep the SD cards, you know, so because they record in 4K. So a couple of times we might use that and we copy them in. And it's just like you have to put it in the computer. You have to open up the packages. You have to name it. Now I've written these couple of buttons. So I just put, for NAM, I've got this thing where any SD card that goes into one of these computers, it will automatically, if we put a little text file on the SD card, it will name any of the files with whatever's on that text file and the today's date and then copy all of that to a network drive and that's just put it in and it just automatically goes and i'm trying to do some of the stuff like that here so it's just i put it in go yeah i want to call it that yeah off you go and it, so those things are the tedious aspect of you know working with video I, I don't know that so i've done all of that so i probably won't do anything i'd like to watch some telly matt maybe i don't know matt <laughs> what about you <laughs> um i've got i've got i tend to spend this time of year sort of doing admin and getting stuff ready for 2019 so with my releases coming out and a bit of a tour schedule for next year which is Ooh. taking up a lot of time to organize so that is all happening over i'm doing a rebrand of my artist persona name and that kind of thing so i won't be going under the name matthew hodson anymore which i'll be i'll be maybe announcing over christmas so there's things like websites rebranding photo shoots, marketing, um, planning 2019 in terms of gigs, release mm -hmm. schedules, um, music videos, press photography, wow. 
all of that kind of stuff really and, and now's a good time to do that i find um because otherwise i don't i'm not one of those who wants to sit down and watch tv for eight hours a day over christmas and eat chocolates and stuff like that um but i'm i'd much rather be doing something and it tends to be quiet this time of year so getting into places like um to do photo shoots is pretty easy or if you want to do a music video somewhere you can get in there pretty easy and 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 the rates may be a little bit cheaper because not many people are using it so that can be useful um and just sitting there and doing some admin if you are if you are going to sit down and have some family time i can sit there with the laptop and i can be on wordpress developing my new website and that kind of thing also um just pushing the live streaming a little bit harder as well like gaz was saying so i'm just i've bought some new lights recently and i'm just looking at stepping that up a little bit more and i'm going to be using some new software have, have you seen the obs streamlab software it's pretty cool it's uh, pc I, only at the minute but is um, that yeah i have it's like an open source thing isn't it I th uh, yeah is that, it, yeah it, they, so they had OBS, which is just for streaming, but now they've got this thing called OBS Streamlabs, which allows you to do it's just really cool interface on it, and, and it's very, very versatile. So I'm going to have a separate machine running that, so I need to set that machine up and interface it with my equipment here and just get cameras cameras set up and that kind of thing. Um, so a lot, lot of that thing, really, and also spending time in the studio. So I'm at a good point at the moment. Wow. I've managed set myself up at a point where I've, I've got i can use this time constructively i'm not going to be spending two weeks rewiring a studio you know the studio's just been rewired to allow me it's to ready have this to rock yeah. wow yeah it's ready to rock. sounds like you're going to be really busy if you get all of that stuff done in the christmas <laughs> break then you know good for you i mean that, that's impressive <laughs> and, and kudos for actually being grown up enough to plan things like that i tend to be very reactive and, in, uh, and um, spontaneous when it comes to let's do something like that but then when it, i do it i'll spend a week planning it or two weeks planning it when i've decided yeah. but good for you well i, I think this yeah. is probably a good time to um to maybe consider our our, our, our our christmas christmas special for i feel it was special after all uh <laughs> come to an end and i, I want to say thank you very much to everybody also thank you so much to all of the guests who've been on the show over the last uh, 12 months and uh, maybe who can't mm. make it happy christmas to all of you people and also all of you people the listeners and the viewers and all of that i hope you will have a, a good uh, break whatever your denomination may be you know whatever time you want to spend doing then i hope you enjoy that time so uh, before we go i'll just quickly say uh again a thank you to isotope for supporting the show over the year and remember you can enter to win the first copy of rx7 next year which we're looking for the hashtag christmas mixes and the hashtag rx7 to at sonic state and at isotope inc so that'll enter you in and then on mm. january the 2nd where our next show is uh we will be able to announce a, uh, a winner for that but thank you guys um dave thanks ever so much for joining us i hope you have a lovely thank christmas you. and you. uh your album i can't wait to see that that looks like a really good yeah. one. that's exciting mm. i'll send you i'll send you one down yeah you excellent yeah. Hey. If, if you don't listen to the music it's worth it for the artwork alone because people <laughs> will know what an idiot i am <laughs> oh that sounds like a really good fun but thank you dave and um no, thank you all the all the best to you and yours and of course matt as well thanks for joining us this year because i think uh you, nice, you entered you entered the fray this year and thank you for joining us it's been I a great did. addition to the yeah, team thanks. really enjoyed it thanks um, thanks for having me and for putting up with me and um and merry christmas everyone thanks and it's merry been great christmas, and it was great to meet you all as well this year and what have you so yeah cool have a great christmas everyone Ah, uh, we will indeed. And Gaz, of course, a Merry Christmas mm. to you, and I hope uh, I we will speak again very soon. Oh, I'm sure we'll. I totally forgot to mention earlier that um, I got up on stage with Sheik last night. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> did yeah, you do the yeah. dancing at the end? I did. Yeah. Did yeah. You do that? yeah. Yeah. It's great. Fun, isn't it? It? It yeah. Great. So uh, obviously, courtesy of our of our glorious Mr. Hilton. I tell you what, Rich Hilton is such a key, he's such a player. He is top notch. He is such a good player. And um, yeah. So courtesy, um, me and my wife managed to get up on stage and have a little bop around on on the last tune, which was quite fun. Um, a, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's such a moment. It is, isn't it? It's brilliant. Um, and Niall is just, he's just the, the dude, isn't he? He's just a, such they a cool are guy. One yeah. of the most amazing live bands. 
Oh, I mean, honestly, it, it wasn't. It was literally. It's just like I didn't go last mm. night, but when I saw him here, it was literally like hit after mm. hit after hit after oh, hit after hit. Yeah. And as musicians, they are all exactly they are very, very good. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Well, happy uh, Christmas to you, Rich, as well. well yeah, definitely. Because oh, yeah. he couldn't make. It. He's yeah. got a big show at the O2 tonight. I think. Um, so. Yeah, Jerry. Awesome. Uh, um, yeah, so I no, I'd, uh, I'd had a lot of fun, um, and I uh, yeah, I got to. Um, uh, God, what happened? I was, yeah, I'm with Robbie Bronneman as well, but Robbie refused to go on stage. Uh, so he, um, he, but yeah, he took was, the video. <laughs> he, he did actually. <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, um, what a so, nice way to uh, end the year. I, I'm ashamed I couldn't get to uh, the 20 of those shows. It's just been a very busy period, but hopefully I'll get mm. to slow down a bit after the weekend. So that would be a lot yeah. of fun. But, guys, um, it's that time where we wave ourselves off. Happy Christmas to you all, and happy yeah, Christmas happy to Christmas. all you out there watching. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. See happy you next Christmas time. Happy, happy holidays. Hey, bye. Bye. bye.